Hey guys, today we're going to give a quick update on the Chia farming rig. As many of you know, I've done two videos on Chia farming in the past several months. Um, I've been wanting to put an update out for a little while. In fact, I was even tagged in a video recently titled, Where Did All the Chia YouTubers Go? Uh, by the poor investor. And to answer your question, well, I haven't really gone anywhere. My rig is still sitting here running. It's farming away. This channel primarily focuses on solar power, battery storage, things like that. You know, people tend to not like off-topic videos, so... While I really do enjoy the chia farming, I just don't do too many videos on the topic. So in the last video, I showed you how I converted this 3U uh, server case, super micro server, to a JBOD enclosure. Since then, I've built a stand out of 2x4s here. I've put everything on this stand. You can see I have an, a UPS on the top shelf. Uh, so this computer on the top here runs things in addition to coin farming, but... Uh, what I'm doing is I'm running Merger FS to combine all my drives into one volume. Then that's shared out across the network to a Dell Mini PC, which is running all the farmers and harvesters. With the exception of Flax and Chia, the harvesters are running on this computer. Uh, the full nodes are running on the other Mini Dell computer. On the second shelf here, like I said, this is the 3U uh, server case JBot I built. I have my second case up here. I have all of the parts now I need to complete this build. Um, this is going to be exactly like this one. I have the same power supply, the same SAS expanders. I had to go out and purchase these drive caddies, which were quite expensive. I really wish I would have bought this enclosure with drive caddies in it. However, when I bought it at the time, I had bought it to pull parts, and I didn't care about using it at that point. So this original JBOD enclosure, I did add eight more drives internally. Built a little mounting structure out of DIN rail. I'll show you how that was done here in a minute. So, as you see here, I still have a lot of unused space that I can work with in this enclosure. Now, if you remember when I built this in the prior video, the SAS expander we used had uh, six ports, and I only used four of the six. So that leaves me with two SAS ports over here. So one port can control four drives. So two ports leaves me with eight drives I can add in. There is plenty of space in this case to add in eight drives. So you can see down here on the bottom of the case, I drilled and installed six standoffs. There's a pair there pair in the middle and there's a pair all the way over here on the end. So next I built this little drive cage here. I just picked up a bar of aluminum from uh, the hardware store. This is one half inch wide by one sixteenth inch thick and I got two pieces. This is actually the bottom and then I got one piece on the top just spaced it out so there's a little bit of space between each drive for airflow and then uh, screwed it down and but uh, this aluminum doesn't seem very strong. It bends very easily. Uh, once you have it bolted down to drives like this in this configuration, this thing is rock solid. So um, this was a super cheap way. I think I got like an eight foot piece or five foot. It was a five foot piece of this for like four bucks at Lowe's. It was very, very cheap. So you'll see here on the bottom, the aluminum goes a little bit past the last drive. This is where I'll screw it into those standoffs. And on the left hand side here, I have room for one more drive. There's only seven drives in here. Um, and then the end two holes will be for the standoffs as well. So in this block, I have four 14 terabyte SATA drives. I have one eight terabyte uh, SATA drive. And then I have two four terabyte SATA drives I just had laying around that I figured why not throw some of my old K32 plots on those. So we can just set those in our enclosure. We'll put two screws on each end here. We're not gonna secure the middle two screws. Obviously we can't get to them with the drives in the way here. Um, but I wanted that middle standoff in there just to provide some support in the center since those standoffs do raise this a little bit off the bottom of the case. And the positioning of this drive block is actually perfect because I've got these three fans here which suck cool air in from the front over the drives mounted in the front of the enclosure. And this is positioned right behind the fan so all of these drives will have this air going over them. So that's going to help with cooling these drives. I don't have to worry about adding any more fans. However, I did swap out the fans I had in here originally. I was using these 80 millimeter Silenex fans and uh, these fans are exactly like they sound. They are super quiet. However, um, as a result of that, they don't move very much air. So I did put in three different fans. They were just scrap fans I had laying around, but they do feel like they move about twice as much air as this uh, Silenex fan did. I'm not super concerned about noise because this is down in the basement. Now for connecting these drives to those two mini SAS ports, I just picked up these cables on Amazon. One end has an SFF8087 connector, and that just breaks out to four standard SATA connectors. And then I still have the original SATA connectors from the power supply that weren't used, so I can use those to power these drives as well. So here's the finished product. The drive cage is installed. It's screwed down. It's held in there nice and tight. You can see the cabling here on the other side. I tried to make it as clean as possible, but you know, it never turns out as good as you want it to. So let's get it turned on and just check our airflow, make sure everything looks good. 
Nice thing about using this particular enclosure is the back plate on the front does staggered spin up so I don't have to worry about all 24 of these drives starting at once and pounding this power supply. So it's a nice smooth startup. So I can feel plenty of airflow. It's quite a bit back here and I can actually feel it out the back of the enclosure. So this will work nicely. These drives will remain super cool. Of course, once this has been running for a couple days, I will go in there and check the smart data just to make sure none of them are overheating and they're all operating in proper temperature range. So that's been running great since. Then on the bottom shelf here, you can see where I put all of the external USB-based hard drives. Um, I'd really like to put those in a JBOD enclosure, but uh, they're running great as is, and I don't really see a reason to spend more money on a new enclosure. And then on the very bottom down here, uh, you can kind of see all the power adapters under there. I've, I've moved away from the uh, single power supply just because I didn't want to redo all the wiring once I built the shelf and put everything together. So I bought this little squid power adapter here. It's one AC input and then it's got five AC outputs. And then on each one of those, I know it's hard to see because it's dark, but I've got a three-way adapter. So that allows me to plug uh, five times three is 15 AC adapters into this. And here's just a back shot of all the externals. You can see I've got a hole drilled in the shelf where I fished up all the power wires to help with cable management a little bit. All of the USB cables are going back to the shelf. And there you can see the USB hubs mounted on the back. Uh, so one question I was getting asked quite a bit is what happened to the Raspberry Pi 4? Um, many of you know I was farming with a Raspberry Pi 4 for gigabyte version. Unfortunately, once the first dust storm hit, uh, the Raspberry Pi 4 just couldn't keep up with the amount of transactions. If you're not aware of what the dust storm was, it's basically somebody out there somewhere for some unknown reason is sending just hundreds of thousands of very tiny transactions to the network. I don't know if they're trying to load test it or break it or what they're trying to do, but um, what ends up happening is it's kicking off all the low performing nodes on the network, of which the Raspberry Pi 4 was one of. Um, it's not an I.O. issue. I, had, I put in a very high speed SD card. It's more of a CPU related issue that is a dual core processor in those and it's just not fast enough to keep up. Probably easily run the harvester on that Raspberry Pi 4 and run the full node somewhere else, but it's just not fast enough to run a full node with the dust storm going on. Another question I get asked quite a bit is, is this actually making any money? Have I broken even? And the answer is no, I really haven't broken even. I haven't made all my money back yet, but I really see this as a long-term uh, investment from my perspective. So I mined bitcoins back in the very beginning when GPU mining was popular. And if I would have kept those bitcoins and then sold them today, I would have had a couple hundred thousand dollars. So I really wish I would have hung on to those bitcoins, and I'm not going to make that same mistake again. I personally feel that the Chia coin is a little bit different than all of the other altcoins out there on the market. So time will tell whether that's true or not, but from my perspective, I'm not sitting here selling the coins as soon as they come in. I'm holding them, they're being farmed to an offline cold wallet, and then, you know, maybe five years from now they'll be worth something, maybe they'll be worth nothing, I really don't know. But... For me, this is more of a hobby. I've learned so much about the hard drives, the system administration, all of this type of setup. Obviously, that varies from person to person. Some people expect to see an instantaneous return on investment with cryptocurrency, and that's just not the way cryptocurrency works. I've also had quite a few people complaining that Chia farmers are raising the prices of hard drives and they're out of stock everywhere and all this stuff. And, you know, yeah, there's some people out there buying new hard drives and they're paying $20, $22, $25 per terabyte and grabbing up large piles of them. Um, that's not what I'm doing. I really don't see the point in doing that. Sure, I have some new hard drives and particularly the external ones, but all of the internal ones in this enclosure behind me you see here are all used hard drives. So I've been purchasing these HGST. Uh, these are SAS hard drives. These are SAS. These are 10 terabyte SAS drives and they're on eBay from anywhere from $110 to $130. The price seems to keep fluctuating. I've had them as low as $107, I think, when I bought a bulk pack of them. But, uh, They've got about three years of power on hours. They work great. I expect them to last a very long time. I'm not purchasing new hard drives. I'm not interested in purchasing new hard drives. I am primarily buying used equipment that nobody else wants at this point. So the argument of driving up hard drive prices is ridiculous from my point of view, at least. Additionally, the equipment's out there to be purchased for the user to use it the way the user wants to use it. So just because that use does not agree with that person's particular opinion does not mean it's a waste of hard drives. And for the total space, I get asked quite a bit. This is 392 terabytes of raw space, and that's approximately 358 terabytes of formatted capacity. Um, I do plan on adding more drives soon. As I mentioned, I'm building out this enclosure. I have nine more 10 terabyte drives I can add in there. I'm currently plotting some of them. Uh, the drives you see piled up are 
plotted already, so I'm pretty much just pulling these ones out and putting the new drive in, filling it, putting it up there until I get this enclosure built. And speaking of pulling drives, that's another fantastic thing about these SAS drives, is I can simply unmount the drive, pull it out of the case, and slide a new one in. I don't have to worry about shutting the whole thing down, restarting all the clients, or anything like that. The merger FS automatically picks up on the new drive once I remount it in the same directory where the previous drive was. Uh, so yeah, I think that's about all I had to update on the Chia coins. I hope that answers some of the questions I've been receiving. Um, I don't plan on doing many more Chia related videos. However, if there's a topic that's of particular interest or I'm making a big change or something, I'll probably video that. But otherwise, there's just not much touching it. This thing just sits down here and it runs and there's, there's very minimal maintenance. I don't look at it. I usually keep the space pool page open just to see when I have bind blocks or anything like that and make sure it's running. But anyway, I'll leave links to some of these parts, including the hard drives. I do think this is a good deal on hard drives. Uh, down in the description of this video. And uh, please don't forget to hit that like button before you go. Thanks for watching.